What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Here's a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. Just a little bit more in-depth look at the English wheel. We've got a video out there that's just kind of the basics, what it does as an English wheel, but nothing really into how to really use it to create and develop shape in a panel. So that's what this video is on. We have a perfect example because I'm working on Christina's 60 Cadillac. We did the trunk drop downs a couple videos ago. Now this is the lower rear quarter section of the driver's side and uh, and we had to wheel this quite a bit to make this panel to get the right crown into it and all that. So we're going to do the English wheel, a little bit on the bead bag and a little bit on the bead roller in this video right now. I just want to take a moment to say thank you everybody for being there for, for us on YouTube, all the support. It's just such an amazing community. I love watching things on YouTube. I love people giving us feedback on YouTube. We're so grateful. We hit 100,000 subscribers today. You know, when we set out on this journey, we didn't think this would happen. We're growing really, really fast. And, uh, and that's because of you guys. So I really appreciate it. And we are gonna do a giveaway for you guys. I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be yet. Definitely, it'll be a bunch of our swag. You'll get, you know, like a hoodie, hat, t-shirt, whatever, but I kinda wanna do something extra special. While Christina and I figure that out and how we're gonna do the giveaway, just stick with us, stay tuned. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into this video. All right, so we're gonna get to work on Christina's Cadillac. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the rust that just came out. Uh, anyway, this is rusty. This is gonna be a cool panel to make. From the wheel lip all the way back here, it's got a bit of crown going through this area. There is some forming that needs to happen up in here. This is all rotted too. So uh, I'm gonna make this in, in a couple different pieces. The main piece is gonna be this outside panel. This is all the rot that we're fixing down here. So we'll probably bring it somewhere up in here, still somewhere where we can get at it to hammer it. So step one is I'm just gonna clean this area off. We're gonna kind of tweak this lip a little bit and, uh, and make it so that we can get a clean paper template off of this area here so that we've got our template. And then we'll cut a piece of metal, start mapping it out from there. Let's do it. All right, so I ended up cleaning up and, uh, and templating the passenger side because it was just in a lot better shape. It's kind of flimsy and we get more information off of the better side. And uh, the beauty about doing a pattern like this is you can flip it inside out. I didn't have any fiberglass reinforced tape for the center of this to like really hold its shape, but it still works with multiple layers of masking tape. The number one thing you gotta remember when you're doing it this way is that step one, Masking tape, overlapped halfway, don't go more than halfway so that you're not uh, creating any extra thick little strips anywhere. So you want just one overlapping 50% of the other one all the way along. And then I did another layer that just went side by side, you know, full width. So you can see this is all overlapping going that way. These are full width. It's all very smooth. You don't want to stretch it too much or force it too much. If you put too much tension in the tape too, it can sort of move around. That's what the fiberglass tape takes care of. If uh, we had a layer of fiberglass reinforced tape in there, um, it really doesn't allow any pull or stretch to happen, any shrink or stretch to happen in the tape. Anyway, that's going to be good for us. It gives us the information of the bead roll. There's this bead roll up here. We're going to be able to mark that out right in the tape. It's going to be nice. Um, our edge, this is all gonna be information that we get from this pattern. So it's not actually gonna be this big, the actual piece that I make. I'm probably gonna cut it down 
in a, in a smart spot where I can still hammer it after we TIG weld it on. Next step is gonna be peeling this off and transferring it to sheet metal and then starting uh, the process of shaping that panel for the other side. All right, so like I've said before, I don't have all the answers. I'm always trying new stuff. And uh, the way I'm gonna attack this panel is I'm not just gonna go straight to the English wheel. What I'm gonna do first is I know that there's gonna be some stretch right in this area here. There's not a ton in the front. I can see that because it's, it's quite flat here. I also, I did take a piece of paper, my regular pattern paper that I normally use. I'm out of it, so I just took a piece of regular, like, regular paper, <laughs> packing paper actually, and uh, I just laid it on there and I could just tell that there was a little bit of wrinkling but not very much at all. So there's hardly any real crown in this. Before I get into it, I wanna show you that, um, what's the best way to show this to you? I'm gonna change the camera angle, maybe it'll be easier to see. Okay, here we go. Up here is a much sharper radius than back here. I don't know if you can see how it how it flows like that. It's flatter, then gets sharp. And back here, it's just kind of smooth the whole way. So the radius does change. We have to make sure that uh, we're taking into account that. So let's just see where we're at here. So we're pretty close to, what is that? Three inch. Three inch there. Where are we here? So three inch goes to, what's that? That's six. So we're six inch there and we're three inch up there. So that's what I mean about that gradual change in radius here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my sheet metal, I'm gonna beat some stretches in there on the sandbag. Yeah, when you're using teardrop mallet on a sandbag, we should get some stretch happening. So I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and I'm just gonna start there. I'm gonna go to the English wheel afterwards and smooth it out a little bit and just have a look at where we get to. Uh, keep in mind, once again, we are copying this side for the other side. So I'm, so I'm taking measurements and, and, uh, and making sure that we get the information from this side for the other side. We're actually replacing the other side. See, this is the area that has that stretch that it needs. It's already kind of taking shape. So we're just literally making little golf ball dimples in this, and it's stretching the metal every time we do that. And that's, that's 
how we're gonna get started. All right, so now I'm just gonna get rid of some of those dimples with the English wheel. Right now I'm just, just smoothing out those dimples and just kind of massaging them back into the same plane of, of the sheet metal. That's adding that stretch, you know, it's pushing it back down. So I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, just do a little bit by a little bit. Okay, now that we've got uh, just a little bit of our crown in there, I hope I didn't go too much. To get it so that we can really check it against our panel, we've got to get it into the same form as the car. So in order to do that, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because like I said before, we have like a three inch radius up in this area near the tail, and we've got a six inch radius closer to the front. So we're gonna work it with, uh, with different radius lower dies and just go over it, maybe I'll use like a three inch radius here and then, you know, overlapping, I'll go to a little bit bigger radius and then go to a little bit bigger radius. And we'll just try and get this in the same form as the car so that we can check it and make sure that, uh, that we do have enough crown or not enough. Hopefully not too much. I'm kind of, I always do that. I always take it too far when it's going good. <laughs> All right, so we just checked it on the car and it's fitting pretty good in the lower area. I've got a little bit too much curve here. I need to flatten that out a little bit, but uh, this six inch radius lower anvil, I ran across this area and down here. It does need to tighten up a little bit at the front here, but now I just need a slightly lower crown through this area to kind of bring that top over a little bit. We're basically just trying to rough it in right now. I want to get as close to the shape as I can, you know, relatively quickly. And then we're going to have a look and see where we can just kind of tune it up. Like I said, this is a learning experience for me too. So we're going to get through this together. And because I probably didn't mention it before, and if you haven't seen any other videos where I've used the rubber upper wheel, this is just a rubber band. It's like a truck inner tube or just a rubber band that is on top of this top wheel. And what that does is it allows form to happen. So when I'm using a rubber top wheel, I'm not stretching, I'm not shrinking, I'm not doing anything, but making the roll or the impression of whatever lower anvil radius I have. So if this is a um, six inch radius or if it's a, a, a 10 inch radius or whatever, it's pushing up into the soft rubber upper wheel when I'm using it this way. And so that's giving us, you know, the curve that it's getting. So metal on metal, when it's pinching metal on metal, we're stretching. Or if we have very light pressure, we could be planishing with the English wheel where we're not adding shape, we're just smoothing things out. That's light pressure and the slower and the more, the more pressure that you add, the more stretch you're giving it, this rubber top allows no stretch to happen, it's only for form. So right now I'm just trying to get the shape uh, of the panel to curve over, because obviously this isn't something that you would just throw into a roller. You need to use something like this to get that gradual shape in it. Sometimes the rubber walks a little bit it's because I forgot to tighten up my lower anvil. Just straighten it out a little bit. 
Make sure that's snug, a little extra. And it loves, loves to walk around. Some people use a, uh, a rubber top wheel and I haven't experimented or uh, really searched very hard for a rubber top wheel, but I did find a urethane wrapped wheel. If, uh, if someone in the comments out there, if you're a viewer and if you've used this before, let me know. To me, it seems a little bit too hard. Like I know it would work a little bit, but it's definitely not as soft as the rubber but uh, I might actually use this wheel to glue a thick piece of rubber on so that it's done, like vulcanize it on almost, use contact cement or something. But uh, I've thought about the idea of machining new bearings for this and then making some sort of quick release thing for this upper wheel on my English wheel so that I can just swap the whole wheel out and then I won't have that walking side to side that I'm getting with that rubber band. If I don't pull it straight, it just comes right off. Okay, so what I wanna explain here is that Right now, thankfully, I didn't stretch it too much. It still needs more stretch, which is good. That means we haven't gone too far. It's a little bit harder to reverse than to uh, progress when you're doing this kind of thing. So what I wanna explain now is that when we're stretching with the English wheel, from my understanding, you're almost adding more material. You're adding more surface area because you're stretching the area out. So imagine yourself blowing a bubble and, uh, and the ring of the bubble stays the same, but you're blowing the bubble, the bubble is stretching, and it's coming up. Okay, key. So what's happening right now, and how I know that we need more stretch, is because I'm holding this, you know, tight on this side, and it's fitting quite well. The form is relatively close. And I can look in the end here, and I've got too much material. See how I can rock it? That means it's touching. It's touching right here. I can also rock it this way. It's touching right here. So where it's touching is where the bubble needs to be blown more. So that needs more stretch. So that area, it's kind of like a bit of a, um, like a cloud. It's right, it's right in this area here. That needs more stretch to bring this over more and become the exact shape that we want it to. That's my, uh, my two cents on explaining that. Hopefully you guys kind of get what I'm trying to do here. So now I'm just gonna do some more stretching in here. That is with the English wheel with no rubber on it. I will check this radius. I'll choose an appropriate die of the lower anvil that is as close to this as possible. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and start stretching it. Just trying to get any gunk off the wheel. You don't want dirt on the wheels basically because when you're using the wheel, the dirt all collects and like attracts like, so it becomes little dots of dirt and uh, they become hard and they can actually dent your panel. So it's important to clean your panel and clean your wheels. wiped off my oval, but I know where it is, so it's all right. A little less pressure. Thing else I, that I also wanna talk about is that um, 
that oval that we made, that's not the only spot that needs the stretch. Basically, if we were to only stretch an oval spot, you would more or less see an oval in the panel. So you have to, you have to do that spot and then you have to relax the metal around it so that it becomes gradual and it flows. So if we're gonna stretch more in the center, then we'll pick a bigger cloud. I use the cloud version, the cloud uh, example. So our, our cloud that we marked out with the Sharpie, we'll stretch in there and then we'll go to a little bit bigger cloud and we'll stretch a little bit lighter and we'll go to a little bit bigger cloud and we'll smooth that all over. And then we can cross wheel, you know, and we can go 90 degrees to what we were doing and that will also help smooth it all out and keep the panel flowing. So um, that's what we're gonna do. I mean, we're getting pretty close. Got to try and get the, the edges seem to have a little bit of extra material on them. See this bit of wave that's happening? I think what that is, is just me stretching it in here and it not quite getting to the edge to do an, a gradual stretch. So I'm gonna need to roll that out a little bit more or what I've seen guys do and what I've done myself is um, just to tune up the edges to try and bring everything flat. I use a little bit of a, use the shrinker stretcher, like shrink, shrink these little waves out, which we might do a little bit on this panel. But right now what I'm looking for is that it fits tight all over. And we're almost there. We're very, very close. I don't want to go too far and then have myself ruin it. So what I'd like to do now is uh, maybe, maybe I need a little bit more. It looks like there's a little bit, a little bit in here. So I'm gonna stretch this area a little bit. Maybe just uh, see if I got a pen on me. It's right, right there. So I'm gonna stretch right here a little bit. Overall, it's looking pretty good. So I guess we'll stretch that area and then we'll start trying to tune up the edges and see how we did. Okay, so I'm gonna make that little step here. I just wanted to show you guys the dies. These are the dies I'm gonna to use to make that step. I'm going to pop it up. This is me talking to myself, trying to make sure that I pop these on the right way. So I gotta just swap these out. Okay, so I'm looking at the top of the panel. So I'm gonna pop that down up, okay. So like I said before, this step that I'm putting in here right now, it's for the trunk drop down, which we did on a video last week. It's for the trunk drop down to spot weld two. So there's just basically a, just a little beaded flange area that we've got to throw in there. Just a little bit of a step, kind of eyeball our stagger on here. I marked it with a Sharpie, but this edge isn't perfect 
straight so um, I used a used a piece of tape just to kind of smooth it out just a little bit easier to see okay and I roll this through probably in hopefully in one go I think I can just kind of give her and if we don't get it deep enough the first time we can always run it through again Just lining up the edge of the die, the edge of my tape. Best I can, anyway. Oh yeah, that'll do. One and done. Basically just wanna step it up the thickness of 18 gauge material, so. You can see the other side has the Sharpie on it, so it's a little bit tougher to see, but yep, I think we did pretty good. That's it. All right, she's all done for now. We still got work to do, but I'm really happy with the shape that we got in here. It's a learning experience for me too, guys, so I hope you guys learned something with this video. I know that I did making this panel. Um, it taught me a lot about how to develop the shape that's that slow and uh, and transitioning you know like how we talked in the beginning about the radius it is here versus here how to make that flow through the panel i struggled with that a little bit and blending it out there's a tiny little wave in here like it's maybe a little bit overdeveloped in one spot it's 100 percent good enough for us but stuff to look to improve on in the future so yeah that's it for this video everybody i just want to take a moment to say uh what's up to bad Chad. I've been watching his videos for a while and I know that a lot of you guys watch his videos as well. The poor guy, sometimes he gets a little bit of a flack, you know? I have a lot of respect for Bad Chad because he and Jolene, they're doing their thing. They're kind of like pursuing the dream. They're working together and building a life around their passion, which is building cars. And you know, nobody can fault that guy for that at all. And he builds them his way and he's not He's not saying sorry to nobody. He builds them his way and he gets them done. He does them fast. He has his own style. And I just want to say much respect for Bad Chad and Jolene. I enjoy your content. And if you haven't checked them out, go check them out. Building with Bad Chad and Jolene. They're doing wicked on YouTube. And uh, I just wanted to say hi. So what's up guys? Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.